How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here. You are watching Nature Now. Now this video is about that arthropod with a hundred legs that creeps out so many people. The centipede. But let me tell you something. After this video, you're going to realize they're not that bad. Come along. Centipedes have been around for quite some time, dating as far back as 400 million years ago. It is estimated that there are just over 8,000 species of centipede throughout the world. Centipedes are not insects. They are a type of arthropod in a class known as Chilopoda. Their subphylum is Myriapoda, an arthropod group which also includes millipedes and other many-legged invertebrates. Most of the centipedes in Pennsylvania are a reddish-brown color, but there is a black species too. In this video, I'm going to touch base on some of the characteristics of centipedes in general, and I'm going to film some of the more common species in my area, with the exception of that one pet centipede. In the future, I'm going to have some more in-depth videos talk about specific species and telling you a lot more cool facts. Until then, I'm doing this video. Contrary to what their name implies, centipedes do not have a hundred legs. So another creature that's often mistaken for centipedes are the millipedes. There are a lot of differences between the two, which will be in a future video, but a main difference is centipedes have the legs coming out to the side. Millipedes, their legs kind of come out on the bottom. Plus, millipedes have a whole lot more legs. They have two pairs of legs for every segment. Centipedes only have one. They always have an odd number of pairs of legs. Centipedes are born with a lot less legs than the mature adults. They actually obtain more segments and therefore pairs of legs throughout every molt. So when you see a centipede shed its skin, it is most likely going to acquire another pair of legs. Those legs can range all the way up to 354 pairs of legs in some species. That's incredible. Imagine buying shoes for them. Now, if you're actually able to look close enough, you'll notice that the front of the centipede, pretty much under its head, is a pair of claw-like appendages. Those are called forcipules, and what they really are is a modified pair of front legs. Long, long ago, those front legs evolved into a pair of syringe-like appendages. Those forcipules are attached to venom glands inside the body. They, of course, use those forcipules to inject their prey with a paralyzing venom. And then, you guessed it, they begin to feed on their prey. Prey include all sorts of insects and spiders and other invertebrates. Some species will even feed on mice, snakes, and small birds. But most of them, like the ones we find in Pennsylvania, usually prefer spiders and other invertebrates. Unlike most arthropods and insects, they don't have a waxy coating on their cuticle. Therefore, sunlight can easily dry them out, causing them to lose water and eventually perishing. Lacking the waxy coating on their cuticle is what causes them to hide under rocks and logs and the debris on the forest floor during the day. As you see, as soon as I lift the log, they just dart for cover. And that is the reason why they are nocturnal hunters. It's to stay alive. I'm sure you can tell by watching this video that most species of centipede are not aggressive at all. However, some species can be very aggressive when you invade their personal space. And when they bite you, they'll hold on tight with all those legs while delivering that venomous bite. Not something you want to witness. Birds and other animals aren't the only things that like to eat centipedes. There are multiple human cultures in the world that like to fry them up and eat them also. There's even a species that reaches a foot in length. That's got to be tasty to some people. Centipedes often make very good parents. Many species will actually stay around and guard their eggs. When the centipedes hatch, the mother often still stays around, protecting those babies and sometimes even bringing them to food sources. Like most things in nature, there is a flip side to that coin. Some species will abandon their young, others still will feed on their babies. That's not very common among most species. And some species are even matrophatic, meaning that the young will feed on their mother. Pretty grim. Centipedes can be some of the largest terrestrial invertebrates and they are often quite responsible for keeping the biomass of other invertebrates and creatures in check. Throughout my series, you see me handling all sorts of wild animals. Snakes, wasps, hornets, spiders, <laughs> centipedes. But that doesn't mean I recommend it. These are wild animals. You can cause them unnecessary stress. 
two, you could end up injuring them if you don't know what you're doing. And three, and in some cases most importantly, you could end up getting injured. Take centipedes for instance. These creatures have cardio and neurotoxic venom. They developed venom before spiders, before scorpions, and well before snakes did. When you really think about it, actually, they are the OGs in the venom world. Well, the, the bite, or I should say the pinch, of most species of centipede is no worse than a wasp or bee sting, some of them can land you in a world of hurt. In fact, some species will send you to the hospital. So once again, I don't recommend handling wild animals, definitely not centipedes. I'm a professional. With all that being said, perhaps the next time you see a centipede, think twice before killing it. It might just be helping you out. So that actually concludes my video on centipedes. It's not a very long video, but I hope you learned a few things about them. Most importantly, they're not really that bad. They take out spiders and other arthropods that could otherwise maybe invade your house or take over the environment. You know, you gotta keep these things in check. That's why every little species, everything is crucial. It's a balance. So if you like this video, please hit the like, hit that subscribe button, Hope to see you uh, soon, and I got a lot of cool videos coming out this year. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you got to click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.